Hello everyone, welcome to Cody's Car Conundrum. I'm your host, Cody Wagner. No duh, right? Here we discuss everything from car news, culture, movies, stories, games, interviews, events, and so much more. Without further delay, on with the show. Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this new car special. Today we have a truck that has been making headlines. I am, of course, talking about the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning as it strikes the EV market with sub $40,000 starting price and consider us thunderstruck too. Ford has pulled the wraps off the new all-electric F-150 Lightning today and opened reservations for its first fully electric pickup truck. Let's start with the pricing. The 2022 F-150 Lightning will start off at a surprising $39,974 MSRP before any federal or state tax credits in its base commercial-oriented trim level, rising all the way up to $90,000 or around $90,000 for one of the range-topping models. The mid-series XLT models will start from 52974 MSRP, again before any rebates. Ford vehicles still qualify for the $7,500 federal EV credit, which brings the starting price down to under $32,500. Prospective customers can reserve their Fords can reserve theirs, sorry, at Ford's new website with a $100 deposit. Once again, or I should point out that this article comes from May 19th last year. So almost a full year later. Again, quite late, but better, I suppose better this late than absolutely never. And I have a, I have a lot more recent news regarding the truck as well. So you're getting the full, the full scoop today. Up to 563 horsepower and 300 miles of range. The F-150 Lightning with the extended range battery pack is expected to offer a 0 to 60 mile per hour sprint in the mid 4 seconds, packing an estimated combined output combined output of 563 horsepower and 775 pound feet of torque from its dual motor setup. Models fitted with the standard range battery will offer a combined 426 horsepower and the same 775 pound feet of torque, again from a dual motor setup. The new Lightning is also the first F-Series truck to feature an independent rear suspension, a change that significantly reduces unsprung mass and improves handling and comfort levels. Payload capability is rated at up to 2,000 pounds, while towing capacity is rated at up to 10,000 pounds. Two lithium-ion battery packs will be, av will be available, with the entry-level unit targeting 230 miles of driving range and the extended range battery being EPA estimated at 300 miles. Ford says that the latter is the biggest battery pack they've ever offered without revealing either unit's exact capacity. Depending on which battery pack you go for, the electric F-150 will feature a different onboard AC charger. Trucks with the standard range, standard range battery will get a 11.3 will get a kilowatt single charger, while models with the extended range battery will get a dual charger with up to 19.2 kilowatts, designed to offer the fastest possible charging times to the limits of the SAE charging standards. The F-150 Lightning with the standard range battery pack will be offered with an optional 48, 48, 48A, I think they meant V, 48 volt house charger, which will charge the battery from 15 to 100% in around 10 hours. Not bad, not great. Models fitted with the bigger extended range battery pack and the dual charger can plug into an 80A, I guess it is a, 80A house charger and go from 10, go from 15 to 100% in around 8 hours. Using 150 kilowatt DC public fast charger, and the F-150 Lightning requires just 41 minutes to charge from 15 to 80 percent. That is getting with the program. Ford has also worked on the intelligent range software that displays the remaining driving range, taking into account things like payload and towing for a more accurate prediction. Using the truck sensors, the systems can estimate how much the F-150 Lightning is hauling and adjust its prediction accordingly. In addition, the F-150 Lightning is compatible with the new intelligent backup power system, making it possible to use the energy stored in its battery for powering your home during an outage. The system has the ability to offboard up to 9.6 kilowatts of energy, up from the F-150 Hybrid 7.2 kilowatts, which makes an F-150 Lightning with the extended range battery pack capable of powering a home for up to three days on a full charge. The intelligent battery the intelligent backup power system is enabled by Ford's 80A house charger. The electric truck also features up to 11 outlets in the bed, cabin, and front to power everything from TVs and speakers to electric dirt bikes, circular saws, and jackhammers. Sounds like the F-150 Lightning might just be the ultimate tailgating truck. The battery packs were designed specifically to use in the F-150 Lightning, featuring beefed up cooling system and systems and multiple components. Ford wanted to make sure that the F-150 Lightning's battery will be able to cope in tough driving conditions, including towing heavy trailers and off-roading. The automaker adds that the battery packs are designed for the whole life of the vehicle. 
our customers didn't want their truck to look like a doorstop. The design differences of the new Lightning over a standard F-150 with an ICE powertrain are small, but make, a big enough diff but make a big enough impression to quickly identify it. The front and rear ends will be dominated by new LED light bars in the higher lariat and platinum trim levels, spanning across the width of the truck. The front end will be available with three different grille designs, while the running boards and the bonnet are reshaped for less drag. Our customers told us they want something modern and advanced, but didn't want their truck to look like a door to look like a doorstop or a spaceship," said Jason Turnbull, Ford F-150 Lightning marketing manager. We made sure that the F-150 Lightning stayed true to the Ford truck DNA. Ford did a rather excellent job with the packaging of the new F-150 Lightning, allowing them to create the biggest frunk in the market, offering. 400 liters of volume and up to 400 pounds of payload. That's pretty sick. The power operated Mega Power Frunk offers dry storage space outside the cabin and features clever solutions like a removable floor mat, a false floor, various hooks, four electrical outlets, and two USB ports, and even a drain plug for those who want to clean their muddy gear. The new F-150 Lightning is also the first F-150 equipped with Ford's latest Sync 4A infotainment system that operates via a huge 15.5 inch portrait oriented, so vertical oriented, touchscreen display, and it features natural voice control, cloud connected navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay, and wireless Android Auto, as well as other over the sorry, as well as over the air update, over the air software updates. The touchscreen display retains a physical knob just like the one in the Mustang Mach E. Last but not least, the new F-150 Lightning will be optionally available with Ford's Blue Cruise hands free L2 driver assistance system, which can be enabled on more than 100,000 miles of pre-qualified divided highways in the U.S. and Canada. The 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning will arrive in the market next spring, now, available in four trim levels, two battery options, and the choice for fleet customers to access the company's complete ecosystem of connected data and telematic services. Okay, so we have a few spreadsheets here. I'm only going to read a few things because, honestly, there's quite a lot. If you want to find the spreadsheet, I would go to ford.com see if you can find the f-150 lightning or look up ford like ford motor company media website and look up f-150 lightning and you should be able to find it somewhere in there so you have standard range battery which is so you have targeted miles and charge so you have 10 minutes on a 150 kilowatt dc fast charge Standard range battery will get you 41 miles with a 10 minutes 150 kilowatt dc fast charge extended range battery gets you 54 miles one hour on an on an 80A Ford Charge Station Pro with a standard range battery gets you 19 miles. The extended range battery gets you 30 miles. One hour on a 48A Ford Connected Charge Station gets you 19 miles as well. On the standard range battery, on the extended range battery gets you 20 miles. One hour on a 32A to 240W mobile charger will get you 14 miles on a standard range battery and 13 miles on, a, on an extended range battery. That's interesting. Targeted EPA estimated range is 230 miles for the standard range battery, 300 miles for the extended range battery. Now, there is, a, there is an article that I have in a little bit here that actually talks about what the real range is, as far as I know, because again, this was the article we, we just read was a year ago. So quite a bit more information has come out since then. So let's go jump to the next article. And the next article talks about the onboard scales, I think we mentioned in the prior piece. When Ford unveiled the F-150 Lightning, it revealed that the electric truck would be able to tow up to 10,000 miles or 4,536 kilograms. Just as with standard trucks, though, towing that amount of weight will affect the driving range. Fortunately, the automaker has come up with ways to ensure that customers know exactly how far they can expect to go, no matter how much they're towing. We know many F-150 Lightning customers will be first-time electric vehicle owners who expect that familiar, built for tough capability, along with robust towing, said Linda Zhang, Chief Engineer, F-150 Lightning. That's why we created smart technologies to help take the worry out of towing long distances by giving customers more reliable and accurate range calculations and then automatically locate charge points along the way if needed. Helping supply those smart technologies with data are onboard scales that measure how much the truck is hauling or towing in order to better predict how far it will be able to go regardless of what's being towed. Intelligent Range also collects data on traffic speed, ambient temperature, available energy, climate control, and even route topography to give drivers the best range predictions possible. In addition, the system also samples similar towing and energy situations from the past to make its range calculations in real time. Over time, Ford plans to make further refinements to intelligent range with over-the-air updates to make it even better. Whether you're towing with a gas-powered or electric truck, 
range degradation as a percentage is basically the same, determined primarily by overall cargo and trailer weight at low speeds and by aerodynamic profile at high speeds, said Zhang. That's why we expected the capabilities of intelligent range on the F-150 Lightning with the available onboard scales to also measure the load effects of trailers and cargo to further refine range calculations when towing. The F-150 Lightning further tries to be a good co-driver by using that information in the Power My Trip mapping system to plan a route or route around its charging needs, all in an effort to make towing as worry-free as possible. By giving customers the most accurate range assessments possible and the charge tools they need to tow reliably, we believe they'll move past the myths about, myths about towing with an electric truck and embrace the value-added benefits F-150 Lightning provides, said Zhang. As they get accustomed to how intelligent range and power my trip work, they'll naturally adjust their, adjust their routines, whether that's stopping for lunch at a DC fast charge or finding a route that simplifies their drive. Alrighty, here we have an article talking about how you can use the F-150 Lightning to power up your home for three days. To say there's a lot of excitement around the upcoming F-150 Lightning might be an understatement as Ford has had to shut down pre-orders because they reached production limits sooner than expected. Now, the Blue Oval has announced their partnering, with, partnering sorry, with Sunrun, the solar company, to further help F-150 Lightning owners make the transition to sustainable energy. We've known for some time that Ford planned to allow the Lightning to power homes or other things, but now we know that it's Sunrun who will be developing the two-way home integration system with the automaker. The F-150 Lightning extended range battery has a maximum capacity of 131 kilowatt hours worth of energy, which Ford says could fully power the average home for up to three days, or as long as 10 days when used in conjunction with solar power or rationing. If, for instance, this truck was common in Texas a year ago, the snowstorm that killed the power grid might not, might not have had such an impact on its owners. Ford also says that the home integration system and its own intelligent backup, backup power software will work in total harmony. If the power goes out, the truck can immediately begin powering the home through the 80 amp Ford Charge Station Pro that comes with every extended range F-150 Lightning. When the power comes back on, the system automatically switches back to charging the truck. This feature could get even more advanced though, because Ford wants to enable the Lightning to actively power the home during times of the day when the grid energy is more expensive. That would save the end customer money while also taxing the grid less overall. Some have even suggested that the Lightning is a better solution than having a conventional generator or even a set of Tesla power walls. The problem is that the, trunk, that the truck is a lot more expensive than a conventional generator. Like, is it a better end solution? Potentially. Is it a better upfront solution? No, because again, it'll, it starts at $39,000. A conventional generator doesn't start at that much. I'm not saying it isn't a potential solution. I'm just saying... They're really missing an aspect. They're missing the cost aspect to this up front. It would, the truck would be a much better upfront solution if it cost the same as a generator. It's a truck. It can't cost the same as a conventional generator. So we got a little graphic here that talks about the differences between Ford Intelligent Backup Power and Pro Power on board. So what is Ford Intelligent Backup Power? It powers your home via a 9.6 kilowatt via the available 80 amp Ford Charge Station Pro, similar to a central home generator system. Pro power on board is power out of home, up to 9.6 kilowatts onboard power for a variety of electrical devices like power tools and camping gear direct from 11 outlets on the truck. So Power Pro on board is how to power your devices on the truck. Ford Intelligent Backup Power makes the truck a generator. So what's needed? For, so what's needed for Ford Intelligent Backup Power? Works when connected to home through the 80 amp Ford Charge Station Pro and home integration system. What's needed for the Pro Power on board? Works from standard 120 to 240 volt AC outlets located throughout the truck. What will Ford Intelligent Backup Power run? Or what, what will it run? Powers an average size home, they never specify what is an average size home, with up to 9.6 kilowatts of power through a home integration system. What will Pro Power on board run? Power tools like saws, compressors, drills, and consumer electronic, electronic items such as TVs, stereos, refrigerators, and lighting. Unique benefits of Ford Intelligent Backup Power automatically powers a home during an outage and switches back to the truck's charge schedule once power is restored. The unique benefits of Pro Power on board, up to 9.6 kilowatts of portable power that's ready when you are. It is easy to use and can power a combination of devices and tools. Connection point for Ford Intelligent uh, Backup Power. 
both standard and extended range F-150 Lightning via the charge port when, ex when connected with the 80 amp Ford Charge Station Pro. Connection point for the Pro Power on board is the standard 2.4 kilowatt Pro Power on board features and features eight 120 volt outlets. The available 9.6 kilowatt Pro Power on board features 10 120 volt outlets and one 240 volt outlet. Alrighty, and here we have a, a honestly a really interesting article about how the F-150 Lightning will be able to charge other electric vehicles. Running out of gas is a major inconvenience as you'll either have to get someone to bring gas to you or walk to the nearest gas station and get some yourself. However, that's not compared to electric vehicles as running out of juice normally means getting towed to a charging station. However, that isn't your only option as you can always flag down a helpful F-150 Ford F-150 owner. Thanks to the Pro Power Onboard system on the F-150 Lightning and the F-150 Power Boost Hybrid, owners can help EVs in need thanks to its vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle charging capability. Using the truck's 240 volt outlet, the Ford Mobile Power Core Charger can give standard Mustang Mach E's, sorry, sta or stranded, can give stranded Mach E's approximately 20 miles, 32 kilometers of range for every hour of charging. That same setup can deliver up to 13 miles or 21 kilometers of range per hour to Ford F-150 Lightnings, while the E-Transit low roof cargo van can be given approximately 10 miles of range for every hour of charging. This obviously isn't ideal, but hopefully a one hour charge is enough to get a stranded EV owner home or to a nearby charging station. While owners will have to wait around for the disabled, disabled vehicle to charge, the process is relatively straightforward as all they need to do is connect a power adapter to the Ford mobile power cord and then plug it into the truck. It's also worth mentioning the latter works with any electric vehicle featuring a J1772 charge port so the vehicle to vehicle charging capability isn't limited to models made by the Blue Oval. Only drawback I see to that is reducing your own range by giving someone else your electricity. That's, I mean, it makes sense as a trade-off, but I just wonder, like, how many people are going to be that generous? Not that no one will be, of course, but I don't know. If it were me with a, with a truck like that, I'm sorry. I'd be like, I need all the range I can get. <laughs> I need all the range I can get. Range anxiety, range anxiety is real. All right, and for this next article, it's about power. Specifically, more power than expected from the electric pickup truck. I imagine quite a few owners and potential owners will like to hear this. When Ford introduced the 2022 F-150 Lightning last year, it estimated the dual motor powertrain in the standard range variant would develop 426 horsepower, 318 kilowatts, 432 PS, while the extended range model would have 563 horsepower or 420 kilowatts, 571 PS. While those numbers were nothing to sneeze at, they were simply targeted figures. Now that the truck has gone into production, Ford has revealed the model is more powerful than originally estimated. According to Road Track, the standard range pickup actually produces 452 horsepower, 337 kilowatts or 458 PS, and this is an improvement of 26 horsepower or 19 kilowatts, 26 PS. The extended range variant is also more powerful than expected as it develops 580 horsepower, 433 kilowatts, 488 PS, for an increase of 17 horsepower or 13 kilowatts, 17 PS. While the torque rating remains unchanged at 775 pound-feet, or 1051 newton meters for both variants, the payload capacity has increased to 235 pounds, or 100, has increased by 235, 235 pounds, 107 kilograms to 2,235 pounds or 1,014 kilograms. In a statement to the publication, F-150 Lightning Engineering Manager Depo Adewusi said, We were seriously focusing on raising the bar on this truck, including after we revealed it, so we can deliver more for our customers. He added that our drive for continuous improvement will get a big boost when start when we start getting back start getting feedback and ideas from customers when they receive their lightnings. The 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning went into production earlier this week and offers an EPA estimated range of up to 320 miles or 515 kilometers. The truck also isn't a slouch as the extended range variant can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour or 0 to 96 miles per hour, or kilometers per hour in the mid 4 second range, and this makes it the fastest accelerating F-150 yet. Yes, that includes the Raptor. Ford F-150 F-150 Lightning's EPA estimated ranges are confirmed and some are better than expected. Ford's electric F-150 Lightning is probably one of the most hotly anticipated pickup trucks of the year. But being an EV, one of the main things buyers have on their mind is range. 
Now ahead of its launch this spring, the Blue Oval has released the final EPA estimated range specs for every version of their new electric pickup, and they all meet or exceed the already impressive targets. Final EPA testing revealed that the that all the F-150 Lightnings fitted with the standard range SR 98 kilowatt hour battery keep the same 230 mile, 370 kilometer range as the target. This applies to the Pro SR, XLT SR, and Lariat SR trims. It's the models fitted with the extended range ER 131 kilowatt hour battery that actually see an increase in range. Rather than Ford's original target of 300 miles or 483 kilometers, the final EPA estimate is is that these trucks will be able to travel 320 miles or 515 kilometers on a single charge. This includes the Pro ER fleet only, XLT ER, and Lariat ER trims. Additionally, the Platinum trim, which is fitted with the extended range 131 kilowatt hour battery, but, ha but has less range, also sees its range increase from 280 miles, 451 kilometers, to 300 miles, 483 kilometers. This all confirms what we saw on a leaked win window sticker last week, but what's key is that none of the trucks fall below Ford's original, original targets. And seeing as people typically see different or sometimes better range in the real world compared to the EPA's testing cycle, things could be looking good for Ford's foray into the electric truck market. So we have the Ford F-150 Lightning targeted EPA estimated range, and then the F-150 Lightning final EPA estimated range. We have all the trim levels and ranges here, so I'm going to start with the targeted range. We have the F-150 Lightning Pro SR, 230 miles. Again, estimated range. All of these, up until I say they're not, all of these are estimated range. F-150 Lightning Pro ER fleet only, 300 miles. F-150 Lightning XLT SR, 230 miles. F-150 Lightning XLT ER, 300 miles. So SR is standard range. ER is extended range. F-150 Lightning Lariat standard range, 230 miles. F-150 Lightning Lariat Extended Range, 300 miles. F-150 Lightning Platinum, 280 miles. Now, we have the F-150 Lightning Final EPA Estimated Range. Final EPA Estimated Range, okay? F-150 Lightning Pro Standard Range, 230 miles. F-150 Light F-150 Lightning Pro Extended Range Fleet Only, 320 miles. F-150 Lightning XLT Standard Range, 230 miles. F-150 Lightning XLT Extended Range, 320 miles. F-150 Lightning Lariat uh, Standard Range, 230 miles. F-150 Lightning Lariat Extended Range, 320 miles. F-150 Lightning Platinum, Platinum, I imagine that's Extended Range, 300 miles. All right, so with all the hard stats out of the way, let's talk about the looks. And I'm sure most of you have seen the looks by now, but for those who haven't, it really is just an F-150. <laughs> like, if you've seen the current F-150, you'll you'll know this thing from a mile away. That's what it looks like. The, the, the only difference is that light bar they talk about. You have the normal F-150 vertically oriented lights with the with the outer kind of wraparound deal of the main unit. And then you have that central bar that runs on the top of the faux grille just below, just below the rest of the hood. So you have the, they have the fake grille, light bar, and then base of the hood. That's, that's pretty much how it works. So kind of cool, actually. A bit of a Cyclops look, like X-Men type, but I'm fine with that. At the rear, we have a, a bit of a similar arrangement where you have a almost full-width rear, rear taillight as well. So you have taillights that look a little bit like the headlights, once again, still vertically oriented, but they have lights that are actually in the, in the tailgate. So you have a central taillight bar as well. I say central taillight bar, but you have a tail, uh, rear light bar that goes the width of the bed, or not width of the bed, width of the tailgate right up to the sides where the taillights are actually you know integrated into the bed but for the most part yeah looks like a slightly altered f-150 so if you like the f-150 like the way it currently looks you'll probably end up liking the lightning as well not that great a departure if you like ford f-150 interiors you might end up liking this one i don't remember what the current current generation f-150 uh interior looks like but this doesn't appear to be a absolutely huge departure to me maybe sans the Massive 15.5 inch infotainment screen. What's nice is that even though it definitely looks uh, not perfectly integrated, shall we say, it doesn't stick idiotically high on top of the dash just due to its just due to its general height. So I'm pretty fine with that. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, it, it does it does look kind of I want to say like it's not poorly integrated. It's just that there's this outer outer design element like this outer mount if you will it definitely looks like ford had to create a mount so that the tablet had something tablet so that the infotainment screen had something to stick onto. 
Not the worst I've seen. Granted, not the worst I've seen. But again, definitely looks like they had a bit of a they had a bear of a time trying to figure out how to do it. And they're like, eh, okay, this this is good. Doesn't look too terrible. So not not bad. The only thing that, I guess the only thing that really, really grinds my gears here is the absolute lack of redundant buttons, save for the volume control that's on the touchscreen itself. There's very few redundant controls for things like HVAC and whatever. Extremely annoying, extremely annoying. So that's that's sad. So considering there's not much to talk about when it comes to looks, because again, it's just a general F-150, uh, I think I'm going to give it, I kind of want to give it a 7, you know? I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't really love the F-150's looks anyway. I think the Ram looks better. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a 7. I think it eh, 6.9. Attractive looking truck. Still j- kind of just looks like an F-150. Maybe maybe my thoughts will change once I see one in the flesh. Because it is. There There are, as they said in the article, enough differences to tell this apart from a normal F-150. So you know what? I'll be charitable right now. And I'm going to give it a 7.1 for exterior looks. Just in anticipation for what I think my reaction is going to be like when I see one in the flesh. Uh, the interior, I'm going to give a 6.7, I think. Once again, I think Ram had, just has a much better interior in there. Even though the 12-inch screen is not as big as the 15-inch screen, I think the execution of the 12-inch screen is better than Ford's execution of their 15.5-inch screen here. So, like I said, I'm going to give it a 6.7. Not bad, just I don't think Ford's beating Ram in the interior game here. They haven't yet. They have not beat Ram in the interior game yet. So what do you guys think of the new F-150 Lightning? Like it, hate it, somewhere in between? What do, you, what do you think of all the stats? I think the thing I'm most worried about is the charging other electric cars because that just sounds like a recipe for destroying your own range, frankly. Like, the fact that you can do that is cool. The reality behind it is severely less so to me, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I hope you all enjoyed this new car special. If you did, please make sure to like the episode, share the episode, and follow the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, then please like, comment, share, and consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Please make sure you hit the little notification bell and then all notifications that we are notified every time I upload. If you want to listen to this podcast on the road, but you don't have one with the Podbean mobile app, hey, not a problem. Boot up wherever you get your podcast. Type in Curry's Car Conundrum and then choose the episode you want to listen to. I will see you all next time. You've just listened to me probably ramble about some cars if I'm being honest. If you've enjoyed me passionately talking about lumps of metal on wheels, then why don't you follow me on Twitter at Cody Carr, C-O-N-U-N-D-R-M, or check out my website, www.codyscarconundrum.com, for articles and other car-related content. If you have any questions or would like to become a sponsor, send an email to drtaffy777 at gmail.com and put sponsor in the subject line. Make sure to follow me here or any other platform so you don't miss out on more full-throttle content. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next episode.